In New York City, uh, they have passed a law prohibiting something called manspreading. Now, this is crazy. This is if you take up too much space in a New York City subway seat. You take up two seats, you're manspreading, or you put your foot up on uh, something. Now, why do you call it manspreading? What, what, women can't take up two seats? Okay, all right, that's a small issue you want to put it aside. The real issue here isn't that this is a violation. It's when you have something this vague, it is going to get abused. It's going to get abused for the advantage of the people who are applying that law. In this case, the cops, you're going to see why in a second. And it is going to be used disproportionately against the powerless. When you've got a vague law, you don't go around Beverly Hills arresting everybody who's jaywalking. You do it to minorities. Why do you do it? Oftentimes quotas, as this story explains. First of all, there's, thank God here, people tracking this. In this case, it's the Police Reform Organizing Project. So they go to all these different places and they watch the trials. So they did this in 117 cases. And uh, they were uh, looking in, uh, specifically in New York. And here's a report from the Gothamist about that. 94% of the 850 defendants observed by this group, PROP, were people of color, according to the report. 94%. You think that's an accident? Like they couldn't find any white people in New York? You think they couldn't find Wall Street bankers that, that were manspreading, taking up too much space in a subway car that was, they were acting rude in a subway car? By the way, the point of this law is supposed to be if you're interfering with the uh, the train running or you're inconveniencing other passengers. You couldn't find any white people inconveniencing passengers, only black people and Latinos. Okay, uh, Gotham is to be funny, put up a picture of a person we might recognize uh, on the New York City subway, that's Matthew Broderick appearing to be manspreading. Uh, surprisingly, he didn't get arrested. Man, weird. So they go through all these different stories in, the, in this article about um, the people who got arrested for this kind of nonsense. Uh, and why? Well, this particular case explains it. One man claimed an officer apologized to him after ticketing him for walking between subway cars, saying, I'm sorry, but it's the 26th of the month, and I have to make my quota. So when they got to make their quota, what do they do? They go on the subway, round up the uh, minorities. So in one case, the judge dismissed one of the cases. She's like, wait a minute, it's past midnight. You're telling me on this? subway train, it was so crowded that the guy spreading out his legs, which is the most subjective thing I've ever heard in my life, was causing, causing such a problem that you had to arrest him for manspread. And the officers are like, oh yeah, absolutely. She's like, no, that's, that's not true. Obviously they're doing it to make their quota. Who are you going to pick on? You're going to pick on the powerless. Okay. So now we go to the heart-wrenching stories of what happens uh, when they uh, pick on these people. So I'm going to give you three cases here. As they explain here from the Police Reform Organizing Project, a young African-American woman, a student at LaGuardia College, had three punitive interactions with the NYPD officers in a year's time. Uh, the first was a summons for swiping her school Metro card on Memorial Day. That's, that's an offense. Oh, my God. Next was another summons, this time for having her foot on a subway seat. Now, that's part of the phenomenon we've been talking about. In the third encounter, the officer charged her with being in a park after dusk. Not at nighttime, but after dusk, and cuffed and arrested her because she hadn't shown up in court for her two summonses. Her failure to appear had resulted in her becoming one of the more than one million fugitives from justice who live in New York City, an unfortunate status achieved by not keeping a court date to clear up a ticket for a minor infraction. I'm a criminal now, she said in a bewildered tone, even though my friends call me such a good girl. She's going to college. <laughs> One of the offenses was you're in a park after dusk. You think they're arresting all the white people in Central Park at dusk? Come on, I don't care how right wing you are. <laughs> you don't believe that. You don't believe it for a second. You know they're targeting the minorities because they know that they can get away with it. They got to make the quota. They got to make the quota. Oh, okay. Oh, you were spread out too much on a subway. You were in a park. First one was you used, she is a student. But you used the student card, Metro card, on Memorial Day when you didn't have to go to school. Are you kidding me, man? They ruin her life. She's a fugitive now. They ruin her life. She was going to college. You tell her, hey, work hard, do the right things. Oh, you know, uh, be responsible. Well, that's what she's doing. And look at what you did to her. More. Different case. 
On a monitoring visit to the arraignment part in Manhattan's criminal court, a public defender a motion that she wanted to speak with us during a break in the proceedings. She said, my first nine cases were all unlawful solicitation. Her head shaking in dismay. Unlawful solicitation means a person asks someone to swipe them onto the subway and is considered a punishable infraction even if the individual asked is willing to do so. We asked her about the race of the people charged. All black, she replied. Now, look, in the old days, I got it. New York was a little out of control. People were jumping turnstiles. And then when you arrest them, you found out, or you stopped them, you found out that they had some serious criminal records. I'm not opposed to that. But how many times have people asked to swipe through? I was just in New York about a week and a half ago. I asked my friend three different times. He happened to have a Metro card. I'm visiting New York. I, I didn't have one. He swiped me through. They could have arrested us. And my friend works on Wall Street. You think they arrested us? Of course they didn't arrest us. All black all black. I know it's all a coincidence and we're making it up. Okay, here's another case. Suspecting her of fair beating at a Harlem subway station, police officers threw a woman down, pressed her face to the ground, and kicked her in the ribs. She actually had just swiped herself through the turnstile and opened the gate to guide her baby in a stroller onto the station platform. Her older children, 7 and 14 years old, witnessed the beating. I felt like I was raped in front of my children, she said adding she had moved to Newark to escape the NYPD. You think they're serving us? You think they're serving the citizens? People are escaping from New York to avoid the NYPD. Get beat down in front of your kids while you were trying to get a stroller through and you did all the right things and you paid for it? Well, you're a person of color. I'm not going to bother to check you got a stroller. I'm not going to bother to check that you actually paid. I'm going to beat you down and then go, oh, when I Oh, Jenk pointed out, Young Turks pointed out, this uh, prop pointed it out, reporters, Gothamist pointed it out. No, you guys are the ones doing the race baiting. You kicked the living life out of that woman while she's got the baby and all of that, and then you blame us for pointing it out? Now, I'm going to keep on pointing out until we fix this problem. Just because it doesn't happen to you doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. A lot of white folks in this country go, well, I don't know, I go through a turnstile, I'm fine. I, if you didn't do anything wrong, I didn't do anything wrong. Actually, you did. If you went through a turnstile and you had a friend do it, which probably almost, almost everyone in New York has, you did do something wrong. You just didn't get beat down for it because you're not black or Latino. But because it didn't happen to you doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. It does happen. It happens all the time. These communities aren't angry out of the blue. They're not angry for no reason. This is why they're angry. And if it happened to you, you would be furious, Young Turks.